In this lesson, we want to review solving equations with decimals or fractions. So in the last lesson, we reviewed a four-step method to solve any linear equation in one variable. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to clear an equation of fractions or decimals just to make it cleaner and easier to work with. This process of clearing an equation of either fractions or decimals is completely optional. You can work with fractions in an equation. You can work with decimals in an equation. You get the same answer either way. So this is just something that if you want to do it, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. So let's start out with an example with some fractions involved. We have negative 2 thirds x plus 3 halves, and this is equal to negative 5 halves x minus 13 6. So the basic idea here, if you want to clear an equation of fractions, you want to multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD, the least common denominator, of all the denominators involved. Remember, this is legal because I can always multiply both sides of the equation by the same non-zero number. Now, if I look at my denominators here, I have a 3, a 2, a 2, and a 6. So what would the LCD be? The LCD here would be 6. So all I need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 6. So let's go ahead and set that up. So outside of some parentheses, I put my 6. And inside, I'll put my negative 2 thirds x plus 3 halves. And this is equal to 6 is going to multiply by the right side as well. So I'll set up my parentheses. So negative 5 halves x minus 13 6. And I'll put the 6 outside here. So I'm just going to use my distributive property here and multiply 6 by each term inside of the parentheses on each side of the equation. So to start out, 6 is going to get multiplied by negative 2 thirds x. So 6 times negative 2 thirds x. We know that the 6 would cancel with the 3 and give me a 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So I can go ahead and erase this and put negative 4x here. So next we would see that 6 is going to multiply by 3 halves. So I'm going to put plus 6 times 3 halves. And what we'll have here is that the 6 will cancel with the 2 and give me a 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as plus 9 here. So this is equal to, I'm basically doing the same thing over here, multiplying the 6 by each term. So 6 times negative 5 halves x. And we can see that the 6 would cancel with the 2 and give me a 3. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. So you'd have negative 15x there. So negative 15x. And then lastly, you have 6 that's multiplied by negative 13, 6. So I'll go ahead and put minus. You have 13, 6 times 6. And I'll cancel this 6 with this 6. And I'm just left with 13 there. So now I have an equation that is fraction free. And I can go through my normal procedure. Again, if this is something that you don't want to do, you don't have to. Realize that I have to spend the time to clear the fractions. And I could just work with them if I want to. So at this point, I just want to move all the variable terms to one side, all the numbers or constants to the other. So I'm going to go ahead and add 15x to both sides of the equation. So what's going to happen is this is going to cancel. Then additionally, I'm going to subtract 9 away from each side of the equation. And this is going to cancel. Let me scroll down and get some room going. Negative 4x plus 15x is 11x. So that's the left side of the equation. On the right side, negative 13 minus 9 is negative 22. So what I'm going to do is now finish this up by isolating my variable x. Since 11 is multiplying x, I'm just going to divide both sides of the equation by 11. And that's going to give me a final answer of x equals negative 2. Now, you can check this if you want. I firmly advise that you check everything if you have time. In the interest of time for this video, I'm not going to check all of them. I'm going to check just this first one. Okay, so all the additional problems we're going to look at today, I'll leave it up to you to check. So to check, we want to plug a negative 2 in for each occurrence of x in the original equation. So let me erase everything. We're going to go back up. All right, so what we want to do, remember our answer is x equals negative 2. We want to plug negative 2 in for each occurrence of x. So there and also there. So I would have negative 2 thirds multiplied by negative 2, then plus 3 halves. This is equal to negative 5 halves multiplied by, again, negative 2, and then minus 13 over 6. Okay, so up here we have negative 2 times negative 2, that's 4. So I would have 4 thirds plus, over here, 3 halves. And this is equal to, over here, negative 5 times negative 2 is 10. So 10 halves, and then minus 13 over 6. Okay, scroll down, get a little room going. 
So the idea here is to simplify each side and make sure you have the same value on each side, okay? So I need to get a common denominator going. So between three and two, my LCD would be six, right? So four thirds times two over two plus three halves times three over three. I would basically have eight plus nine over the common denominator of six. Eight plus nine is 17. So let's go ahead and write this side on the left as 17 over six. And on the right, I would get a common denominator by just multiplying this by three over three. 10 times three is 30. So you would have 30 minus 13 over the common denominator of six. 30 minus 13 is 17. So you would also have 17 over six on this side as well. So same value on the left as we have on the right. That tells us that our solution x equals negative two is correct. Okay, so we can check that one off. So for the next problem, we're gonna look at something that's a little bit more tedious. We have some parentheses involved. We have one third multiplied by the quantity negative three halves x plus one. This is equal to 95 twelfths plus five thirds x. So the idea here is that if you're trying to clear an equation of fractions and you have parentheses involved, go ahead and clear the parentheses using your distributive property first and then clear the fractions. So one third times negative three halves x would give me negative three six x. Then plus one third times one is one third. This equals 95 twelfths and then plus five thirds x. Now, between my denominators here, I have a six, I have a three, I have a 12, and I have a three. So the LCD is just gonna be 12. My LCD is 12. So all I gotta do is multiply both sides of this guy by 12, and I will clear all the fractions. So 12 times negative three, six x would be what? I know that 12 would cancel with six and give me two. Two times negative three is negative six. So this would be negative six x then plus 12 times one third, 12 times one third. It's basically 12 divided by three, which is four. So this is four and this equals, you would have 12 times 95 twelfths. We know the twelves would cancel there. You're left with just 95. Okay, and then plus you have 12 times five thirds X. So 12 times five thirds X, 12 cancels with three and gives me four, four times five is 20. So this would be 20 X. Okay. So now that we've cleared our fractions, let's just proceed into our normal procedure for solving a linear equation. Let's go ahead and subtract four away from each side of the equation. And also let's go ahead and subtract 20 X away from each side of the equation. So this is gonna cancel and this is gonna cancel. Negative six X minus 20 X is negative 26 X. And this equals 95 minus four is 91. So to solve this equation for x, I'm just gonna divide both sides of the equation by negative 26, since negative 26 is what is multiplying x. Now, we will not get an integer or whole number here. We're gonna end up with a fraction as an answer. So we're gonna get x is equal to, if I think about 91 and negative 26, I know if I'm dividing here, I'm gonna get a negative, right? Because positive over negative is negative. Now 91 is basically seven times 13. So I could write this as seven times 13. I could write negative 26 as negative one times 13 times two. So we can all see that this 13 would cancel with this 13. You'd be left with seven over negative two, or you could just write negative seven halves, however you wanna do that. Essentially, you could also write this in decimal form as negative 3.5, but however you wanna notate it, the answer is X equals negative seven halves. Now, I'm not gonna check this one in the interest of time, but if you wanted to, you could pause the video, Go back up to the original equation, plug in a negative seven halves for each occurrence of X, verify that the left and the right side are the same value. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how to clear an equation of decimals. This is a very, very simple process. And again, you don't have to do this. This is not one that's gonna really save you a lot of time, especially if you have a calculator, okay? So remember that when you're multiplying by 10 or power of 10, such as 10 squared, 10 cubed, 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth, you know, so on and so forth, this moves the decimal point one place to the right for each zero in the power of 10. And remember also that if you have this notation, so 10 squared, the two there, that exponent on 10 tells me how many zeros I have. 10 squared is 100, it has two zeros. 10 cubed is 1,000, it has three zeros. 10 to the fourth power is 10,000, it has four zeros, right? So on and so forth. So if this guy right here is telling me that I have 10 squared, two zeros, I would just move my decimal point two places to the right if I multiplied by it. So if I had something like, let's say 3.68, I 
and I multiplied by 10 squared, all I've got to do is take this decimal point here and move it two places to the right. This would give me an answer of 368, okay? So very easy to multiply by powers of 10, whether they're given as a whole number or they're given in exponential form, it's very easy to do. All right, so let's take a look at an example here. So we have negative 3.1x minus 1.1x, and this is equal to negative 2.2x minus eight. So the general idea here is to look at your equation, look at all the decimal numbers that you have involved. So what is the largest number of decimal places that you have on any given decimal number? So in this guy right here, this negative 3.1x, I have one decimal place. Again, that's places after the decimal point. Here I have one decimal place. Here I have one decimal place. And if I think about this as negative eight, or I could just think about it as subtracting away eight, however you wanna think about that number as a whole number or as an integer, it's not a decimal number, right? You could put point zero if you want, but basically this zero doesn't add any value. So this is really not a decimal number. So we don't even look at it. I'm gonna erase this and just kind of look at these three numbers here. So the largest number of decimal places is just one. So if I wanted to clear this equation of decimals, I could just multiply both sides of the equation by 10 and I would move all the decimal points one place to the right. I would have no more decimal numbers. So let's go ahead and do that. I would have 10 multiplied by negative 3.1x minus 1.1x and then is equal to over here, I would have negative 2.2x minus eight again, multiplied by 10. So 10 times negative 3.1 would just be negative 31, right? Just move this one place to the right. Then my X comes along for the ride. Then minus 10 times 1.1 would be 11, right? Move this one place to the right, then times X. So this left side just becomes negative 31 X minus 11 X. On the right, 10 times negative 2.2 would be negative 22. Again, just move this one place to the right. Then you've got times X and then minus 10 times eight is just 80. Right? You can think about that as putting a decimal point there and just moving it one place to the right. So it's just 80. So now I have an equation that is decimal free, right? So all basically whole numbers or integers involved. So on the left, negative 31x minus 11x is gonna be negative 42x. On the right, I just have negative 22x minus 80. Nothing I can really do to simplify there. To solve this, I'm just gonna add 22x to each side of the equation. And what's gonna happen is this is gonna cancel. Negative 42X plus 22X is going to give me negative 20X. This will be equal to negative 80. If I've got negative 20 that's multiplying X, I can isolate X by dividing both sides by negative 20, right? The coefficient of X or what is multiplying X. So now I'm gonna cancel this with this and say this is X is equal to negative 80 over negative 20 is four. Okay, so that's gonna be my solution. Again, if you wanna stop and check, Go back up and plug in a four for each occurrence of X, and you will see that you get the same value on the left as you do on the right. All right, let's take a look at one more of these. Pretty easy concept overall. So we've got negative 0.9X minus 59.76, and this is equal to negative 10.8 multiplied by the quantity X plus eight, and then minus 4.9X. So again, if you're clearing fractions or clearing decimals, and you have some parentheses involved, clear those first, and then go to your procedure. So I'm gonna rewrite this as negative 0.9X minus 59.76. And this is equal to negative 10.8 times X is negative 10.8X. And then negative 10.8 multiplied by eight is negative 86.4. So minus 86.4 and then minus 4.9X. So what I wanna do is just multiply everything by the power of 10 that would clear all of the decimal numbers, okay? So we wanna make those into integers or whole numbers. So this has one decimal place, this has two, this has one, this has one, and this has one. So the largest number of decimal places occurs here with two. So to clear that decimal, I need to multiply by 100, right? Because 100 has two zeros, I would move two places to the right, one for each zero. So I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation by 10 squared, or again, 100 as a whole number. So 10 squared multiplied by negative 0.9X minus 59.76, and this is equal to, over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. So negative 10.8X minus 86.4 minus 4.9X, again, multiplied by 10 squared or 100. So all I'm gonna do for my multiplication here, it's very, very easy. 
just moving each decimal point two places to the right. So this guy is going to go one, two places to the right. So if you had 0 0.9, forget about the negative for a second, and I move this two places to the right, I'm going to end up with the number 0, 090. 0. The 0 in front of the 9 doesn't add any value. It's just 90. So what I'm going to end up with here, because it's negative, I'm going to have a negative 90 and then x, then minus. This guy goes two places to the right. I get 5,976. Then over here, if I multiply 10 squared by each term, my negative 10.8x, I would have negative 1, 0. This goes 1 and then a second place to the right. So negative 1,080x, then minus. This would go two places to the right. So 8,640. And then minus, this goes two places to the right, so 490x. So now let's go ahead and just combine some like terms. On the left, I can't really do anything. So I'm just going to write negative 90x minus 5,976. On the right, negative 1,080x minus 490x is going to give me negative 1,570x and then minus 8,640. All right, let's scroll down and get some room going. So what I want to do now, I'm going to add 1,570x to each side of the equation. And what's going to happen is this is going to cancel. And I'm going to add 5,976 to each side of the equation. So this is going to cancel. So negative 90x plus 1,570x is 1,480x. This equals... Negative 8,640 plus 5,976 is negative 2,664. All right, so the last thing I want to do is isolate my variable x. So I'm going to divide each side of the equation by 1,480. This is not going to be a whole number or an integer as an answer. Essentially, I know that it's going to be negative, right? x will be equal to something that's negative because I have a negative over a positive. If I factored each of these, I would find that we have a common factor of 296. So if I divide 2,664 by 296, I would get 9. So this would be negative 9 over, if I divided 1,480 by 296, I would get 5. So you get x equals negative 9 fifths, or as a decimal number, you could say negative 1.8, right, if you did that division. So this would be my answer, either one of those. You could write x equals negative 9 fifths or x equals negative 1.8. And again, if you want to check, you go back up. You plug either of those in for x in the original equation, and you verify that the left and the right side are equal.